Real dividend yields have greatly expanded over the past year and this is because REIT share prices have crashed even as most REITs have kept hiking their dividend. As a result today quite a few REITs are yielding as much as 12% which typically would be the sign of high risk. It's really rare for REIT to yield so much and have a sustainable dividend but there are exceptions and in today's video I'm going to highlight two high yielding REITs to you that I'm buying at the moment that I expect to sustain their dividend. Hey everyone, this is your CI, run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. In today's video, I want to talk to you about two REITs that yield 12% that we are buying for our core portfolio at High Yield Landlord, which is my REIT newsletter. There is a link to a two week free trial in the description of this video if you want to check it out. Before I get into the first REIT, if you could please still like this video, that will really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you very much. So the first high yielding REIT that we are buying here is called Voronado Realty Trust. And I'm not here referring to its common equity, but I'm referring to its preferred equity series M. It's today very heavily discounted trading at just about half of its par value and as a result of its steep discount today the yield is really high at about 12%. I like this opportunity because I think that the market has overreacted a bit on the preferred equity. The REIT is going through some struggles and I think it's right to discount the common equity but it has failed I think to appreciate the fact that the preferred equity is just a small slice of the balance sheet. It has a strong buffer of common equity to protect it. The dividend is cumulative which means that the dividend is going to have to get paid even if it's suspended at one point and so unless you think that the REIT is going bankrupt I think it's very likely we're going to keep earning this 12% dividend yield and eventually I would also expect the share price to return closer to its par value. Today is trading at $12 per share. The par value is 25 so that would imply up to 100% upside potential as it returns there. Perhaps it won't return quite to 25 but even returning to 20 would lead to very significant upside and so the reward potential is very significant on top of this 12% dividend yield and so here are three reasons why I don't see this street going bankrupt. The first reason is that it owns mainly class A office properties in New York City. The office sector is obviously going through a perfect storm at the moment, recession, work from home, difficulties refinancing debt, a lot of capex, a lot of problems here like I don't want to deny this but it's important here to remember that not all properties are created equal and I think that just like in the mall sector here the weak is getting weaker and the strong is going to get stronger in a sense that class C and class B office buildings are going to face a lot more pain than the class A buildings. To understand why here you need to consider how a lot of companies today are rethinking the office food print. In many cases what they are doing is they are reducing their office footprint so they might as an example vacate uh, two or three class B properties and they will then consolidate this into just one property so less square footage but in that case they will typically favor a new and modern class A buildings with better amenities, a very good location and so these are the type of properties that Vornado owns for the most part so it doesn't mean that's immune to the pain of the office sector but I think that these buildings are going to remain in high demand as well reflected in its rent spreads at the moment which remains positive even today and so I don't see the need for these office buildings to go anywhere. Then the second reason is that the REIT has an investment grade rated balance sheet with lots of liquidity, limited debt maturities in the coming years and so I don't see a big catalyst that could push the company into bankruptcy because of failure to refinance some debt as an example in the coming years. And then the third reason this REIT has a good management team, they've acted in a very shareholder friendly way in the past. As an example recently they fully suspended the common and dividend payment because the market wasn't giving it any value and it announced at the same time a share buyback program which could create a lot more value for shareholders. We've also seen some insider purchases and so this is a read that has a management that has acted in a shareholder friendly way in the past. I think that this also reduces the risk of a future bankruptcy. So to recap class A office buildings, investment grade rated balance sheet with good liquidity, strong management team and now they're also retaining a lot of cash flow since their common dividend has been suspended and so this leaves a lot of liquidity to keep paying the preferred dividend. Then on top of that the director of the company recently bought $150,000 worth of preferred shares for his kid. He's already purchased I think close to half a million for this kid of these preferred shares and so for these reasons I think that it's quite unlikely that they're going to suspend the preferred dividend given that there's some insider buying. They have the liquidity and the cash flow to keep paying the preferred dividend that's very well covered and then again it has a cumulative feature so even if they suspended it they will need to repay all these missed preferred dividend payments in the future before 
they could resume a common dividend. When you take all of this into account, I think the risk reward is very compelling here because again, 12% dividend yield up to 100% upside potential to get back to par. Yes, the market fears about the office sector, the fears are warranted, but again, we're not in the common equity, we're in the preferred equity. And so as long as the company survives this transition phase, we're gonna earn high dividend and eventually we'll get a lot of upside. Then the second high yielding read that I'm buying is called New Lake Capital Partners. This is a small cap read that specializes in cannabis cultivation facilities. It's quite small and new. It went public in 2021. It's quite similar to another read called Innovative Industrial Properties. You might be more familiar with that one. But so ever since it went public in 2021, it has hiked its dividend in every quarter without exception. And at the same time, its share price had just keep dipping lower. As a result, the dividend yield has expanded to 12%. The market appears to be discounting New Lake so heavily because the cannabis sector has fallen out of favor. Cannabis companies are today having a hard time accessing capital, margins are thin, there's a lot of competition, it's just a tough business these days. This also means that being the landlord of these companies is going to involve greater risk. More frequently you're going to have missed rent payments, lease defaults. These type of problems are inevitable when investing in these higher risk, higher reward type property sectors like cannabis cultivation facilities. But that doesn't mean that these properties are bad investments and I think that the market is underappreciating really the resilience of being a landlord. The nice thing about being the owner of the real estate is that you're really selling the picks and shovels to the industry. You own the critical infrastructure and so you're not depending on one specific tenant. If you have one tenant that fails to pay the rent and eventually really defaults on, on the lease, you, you cannot come to an agreement, then you're just simply going to have the tenant vacate the property and you're still going to be able to release it to another tenant as long as the property is desirable. And then in the case of New Lake, there are some important risk mitigating factors. The main one is that it focuses on limited license states and the license is typically tied to the property itself. And so as long as people are going to consume cannabis and the consumption even keeps on growing, I think that it's very likely that there's going to be demand for these properties. Then the second risk mitigator here is that most of New Lake's tenants are very big public companies. And so these are less likely to default on their leases. This doesn't mean that New Lake isn't ever going to have tenant difficulties. They're really inevitable in this sector. In fact, it's facing some at the moment with one tenant representing about 10% of its NOI, but overall they should mitigate risks. And then the third risk mitigator, even more important probably, is the fact that it has the strongest balance sheet of pretty much all REITs. Today it has no debt whatsoever, it has a lot of liquidity, and so it can really play on the offensive today and acquire more properties at discounted prices while most investors are fearful of this sector. The management recently held a conference call, they made it clear that the dividend is well covered, they announced a buyback plan, they've even been buying back shares already now and so they are making it clear to the market that the dividend is going to be maintained there is enough cash flow on top of the dividend to buy back shares and also acquire more properties and so I think that it's very unlikely that they're going to cut it in the future at today's price there's a 12 percent dividend yield if it returns to its historic valuation you will get up to 100 percent upside here as well that's not exactly what I expect I think it might have been a bit overpriced when it IPO'd but in any case there's significant upside here on top of the dividend yield and that makes the risk reward very compelling so these are two two REITs with 12% dividend yields that we are buying at the moment. If you want to access all our other high yielding opportunities, feel free to join my REIT newsletter for two week free trial. I'll put a link somewhere in the description. The two week free trial is not always active, but Seeking Alpha just recently reinstated them. So yeah, feel free to check it out if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio. And otherwise, once more, if you could like this video, that will help me a lot. I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much. I my next one. Bye bye.